Hello guys and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, as you could tell by the title and the thumbnail, we are talking about the Forbidden and Limited list update for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, or the ban list. As you can tell, there's been an update. So let's just quickly hop into this and first and foremost, as you can tell, there are no bans. Why is this bad? Treacherous Trap Hole. Why is Treacherous Trap Hole ban worthy? Because it's an insane card that wins you games. It's on the same level as something like Imperial Order or Red Reboot in the TCG where literally if you end up drawing it, sometimes as a one of, you can just literally win the game off of that card alone against a lot of decks. There you go. That's why. It's pretty simple. It's similar to things like Hate Runade, except for monsters instead of spells and traps. So, instead of playing, you know, a bunch of back row and then losing to a Hate Runade, you're playing a bunch of monsters and lose to a Treacherous. It's really annoying. That's it. However, the only reason I could see that this isn't banned is because they want to sell <clears throat> some new upcoming spell and trap card removal in the ways of Twin Twister or something like that. If that's the case, great. If not, Konami has made a mistake. It's just, it, you play it in every deck. Unless there is literally a card that is limited to, do, to two in your deck, you play it, right? That's why basically the limited to two list exists. <laughs> so that you can't play Treacherous. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Swallow's Nest is a great hit to uh, harpies. That's what they're called. I almost called them bird up. That's not right. Different birds. Um, harpies are really strong, and this was a great way to deal with, like, enemy back row. They would, you know, they have harpies hunting ground. They would normal summon a channeler. They would destroy one of your back row. Maybe you flip that back row up. All of a sudden, they tag out with the swallow's nest and your back row did nothing so you're like well crap that sucked i just lose advantage they they gain all of their advantage and i lose it so it's it's just an insanely good card to uh basically nullify a lot of um uh, a lot of bad matchups and a lot of uh bad hands right if you ended up drawing one of your uh, harpies, harpy ladies, um, like your harpy lady three, uh, I think it's one, harpy lady one or cyber harpy lady, if you ended up drawing one of those, that's like a brick, you don't want to see that, but you could just normal summon this and then activate swallow's nest, now you can't do that, so I like it, great hit, spellbook of the master we'll talk about in a second, so limited to three, here, let's talk about spellbooks, uh, so Spellbook of Fate, first of all, being unlimited is really good. It's the lifeblood. It's the win condition of spellbooks. You banish three spellbook spell cards from the graveyard to banish a mon er, to banish a card your opponent controls. Really solid. However, limiting Spellbook of the Master limits the amount of spellbook cards in the graveyard, as well as specifically making the deck a little bit less consistent. Spellbook of Fate is a phenomenal card. It's a non-target banish. It's a non-target return a set spell or trap card on the field. It's a non-target change a monster to face down defense position or face up attack. Uh, it's really solid, but limiting, I mean, completely unlimiting it would be I think a little bit too much. Uh, just having Spellbooks back into the in the game would be a lot like having Ixshell back into the game uh, and, and being playable. It would just allow for really degenerate, annoying duels. That's it, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's a great hit, though, or a great boost to the deck. Uh, and I would love to see if Spellbooks end up being playable at this point. I'm actually building towards Spellbooks on my second account, so... Hey, we might end up playing this. Check out some of my streams. There you go. Uh, Thunder Dragon Dark and Thunder or Chaos Dragon Levianir being limited to three is great. Why? Because Levianir kind of didn't need to be hit in any other way. If you were to limit it to two, it would probably be too much and it would basically see no play because of the fact that you want to utilize a myriad of other cards that are limited to two, right? Things like Charge of the Light Brigade, things like Aloof Lupine or Gold Sark, that it would basically just kill off Levianir. Well, I think it's a really good boss monster. Um, I mean, however, 
it was incredibly overpowered in Thunder Dragons. And now the fact that you basically only get to play one because of Dark's limitation means that uh, it's going to be more of a of a like final piece to the puzzle, right? You end up searching it, you end up adding it with Destiny Draw or something like that. And then you're able to plop it down to really push for game there. And if it doesn't end up working, then you're kind of out of gas. And Thunder Dragons were known for just constantly go, go, go. Just if you could get started, you just end up winning the game because it has the highest highs, right? Um, but now those highs are just pulled down a bit. That's all it is. And I like it, right? Um, limiting Dark to basically two, uh, otherwise you're not playing Levianir, is pretty decent. And I really like limiting things to three. That's something Konami hasn't done in a while and needed to do. So limiting that to three, really good. I love seeing the limit to three list utilized. Moving on, we have the Unlimits Gagaga Sister and Iron Core of Koeki Mayuru. Now, there was a tournament that has already been played on this latest ban list. So, on a mats topped, utilizing three Gagaga Sister. This card is still insane. I don't know if unlimiting it is a good idea. We will have to see. Um, Onomats did end up topping that tournament, as well as several Thunder Dragons and Harpies. So, in fact, two Harpies got top eight, and one of the Thunder Dragons also got top eight. So, there you go. Harpies, I think Harpies also were the second most represented deck in top 32. So, Harpies aren't dead, by the way. It's just kind of like a slap on the wrist. Um, but Thunder Dragons are also still really viable. Uh, however, Gagaga Sister being unlimited, I would have rather have seen Head be unlimited here because Sister seems to be way better for making turn one boards and on the crackback, right? But uh, yeah, I mean, not being able to search out Head here is okay. Um, however, you could literally just draw sense high level into it, uh, which is what the person who topped with Onomats did. So there you go. You can still search your uh, Gaga Ga head. Moving on, we have Iron Core of Koyaki Mayuru. This is a great unlimit. Uh, I still don't think you could unlimit the entire deck of Koyaki Mayuru. I still think it would be a little bit too good. Uh, would it be tier one? Probably not, but it also could be tier one. They have a lot of really good cards um, and Book of Moon and stuff like that, just adding to the power level of the deck. Uh, but now they still just have that one of card with uh, the boss monster. The special summon pop a card, 3000 beater. It's an insane card. So having that limited to one is great, but everything else being unlimited is fine. And that's it. No skills, no nothing like that. I think it's a good list. I think it's really nice seeing more cards limited to three rather than just semi limited or limited to one or something weird like that is very nice. And I would love to see Konami make this list really long. <laughs> this limit to three list really long. Um, but that's just me. I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy. If you did, a like is very much so appreciated. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links action, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye.